introduce you to the world of juggling and take you through juggling step by step, easy tricks to difficult tricks to really, really difficult tricks. Welcome to Juggling 101. Before we delve into juggling, let's get a few basic questions out of the way. What is juggling? How do you define juggling? Oxford defines juggling as throwing and catching objects skillfully in the air. Notice two words. One, it doesn't talk, one, it talks about objects, it doesn't talk about balls. So you could theoretically be juggling balls, bottles, clubs, fire sticks, what have you. And you could be throwing, in, throwing them in infinite different patterns. So that's juggling defined for you. Now, for the purposes of learning juggling, what do we start with? What do we juggle with? What I would say is I'm using bean bags. Bean bags are, let's say, objects which are size of an apple and which are conducive to throwing and catching easily. So what you need to do is find yourself three spherical objects about the size of an apple and the weight of an apple and start juggling. What I've done is I've divided the tricks into three broad categories, basic, intermediate, and advanced. Let's look at some of the basic tricks. The basic tricks are listed here. We start with the beginner's trick, which is a three ball cascade, then move on to over the top, under the hand. Then we also start another branch, which, is, which lends itself to a new family of tricks, which is two in one hand. But first, the three ball cascade. So let's have a look at what the three ball cascade looks like. The three ball cascade looks something like this. You know, the hands are moving from out to in, out to in, if you notice the rhythm. So this is what we're going to learn. Lesson one, the three ball cascade. Let's see how we learn it. Step one, let's start with one ball. Now all you need to do is to toss the ball from one hand to the other. Notice this. Now the key here is that you should not look at your hands when you throw. You should look at the ball and you should try to concentrate on the highest point in the trajectory. So try to keep your eyesight at this level and see the ball and the hands should do the catching automatically. Yeah? So that's step one. Now it's time to get the second ball in the picture. Take the second ball and start with one ball each, one in each hand. And uh, do, do this. Throw the ball in the right hand and as the ball reaches the peak, throw the other ball under it and catch the ball. One, two. One, two. One, two. Now the important point to note here is that people have a tendency to interchange the ball between hands. You know, when one goes, the other hand goes under the ball and passes it to the other hand. That's a habit you need to break out of. So notice it again. One, two. Each ball should try and peak at the same height. And notice the time difference between the two throws. You're not throwing them at the same time. You're not doing this. What you're doing is two distinct sounds. One, two. One, two. Yeah? Now practice this until you get this solid. Now try and change the direction as well. Instead of starting with your right hand, start with your left hand. One, two. One, two. Yeah? Once you've figured both these directions, now it's time to get the third ball in the picture. Here comes the third ball. Now hold the third ball in your right hand. Have two, two balls in your right hand, one in your left. And always start throwing with the hand which has two balls. Yeah? If you've got uh, two balls in your right hand, right hand is the one which goes into action first. So let's break down the three ball cascade into two different cycles. Let's look at cycle one now. The right hand starts, the left hand starts, yeah, and the right hand throws again. So you've got three steps in the first cycle. Just notice this. One, two, three. Now at the end of the first cycle, you're left with two balls in your left hand and one in your right. Yeah, notice this again. One, two, three. So what you've done is you've put together whatever you've learned so far and you've completed one cycle. So let's look at the cycle again. One, two, three. So at the end of the first cycle, you have two balls in your left and one in your right. Now it's time to reverse the cycle. Let's look at the second cycle. You start with your left hand now. You've got left two, two balls in your left hand. So you throw with your left hand. One, two, three. Look at this now. You have two in your right, one in your left. So basically, you're back to the beginning of cycle one. All you need to do now is to put together cycle one and cycle two and you've got the three ball cascade. Yeah? Let's give it a shot. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that's the three ball cascade explained to you. And once you've cracked the three ball cascade, what you've done is you've moved from being a mere human being to an awesome juggler. Welcome to the juggling club. Now that we've learned the three ball cascade, 
-hmm. Let's try and make a few modifications. You know, it might get a, a bit boring to do the three ball cascade in the same pattern. Once you've mastered it, you're itching to move on to more. So let's try a couple of variations in the three ball cascade. Let's have a three look at the three ball cascade again. That's what it looks like. Now, what's the first one? We're tapping with the hand. Let's see what that is. That's just a break, you know, which gives some kind of uh, new look and feel to the pattern. How do you do this? It's pretty simple. All I'm doing is as I'm juggling, I'm stopping it at a certain point. I'm holding two balls in my hands. And the third ball, which is in the air, when it drops down, I tap it. And depending on where it goes, I start the pattern again. Let's have a look at the pattern now. <coughs> Stop. Well, the tricky bit is here, you need to have control on how you tap the ball. If you don't tap it well, then the ball might fall or it might go to a, you know, a difficult to catch position. Yeah, that's better. So all I'm doing is I'm stopping, stopping the pattern and catching it again. Yeah, that might seem a bit hard in the beginning, but once you get a feel for it, you'll find it very easy. Now another similar modification is I can tap it off my legs. Uh, just have a look at this. The fundamentals are very similar. All I'm doing is I'm stopping the pattern and the ball which is in the air, I let it fall down. I tap it off and depending on where the ball goes, I start the pattern again. So that's the three ball cascade and a couple of variations that will keep you going. Yeah? Now we've mastered the three ball cascade. Let's see what's in store for us next. Next, let's have a look at over the top. We have over the top, under, over the top we have right, left, same ball and every ball. I'll explain this to you as we move along. But one thing you notice here is that there is a prerequisite for over the top. You need to have learned the three ball cascade well for you to really graduate to over the top. In juggling, there's no point rushing things. You know, once you get the three ball cascade, people have the tendency to rush to other tricks. But what I would suggest is you spend some time on a trick, master it. For example, three ball cascade, when you start, your hands would be going in different directions. But the idea is to minimize the disturbance and get the flow smooth. Get the throw smooth and have a smooth three ball cascade before we move to over the top. Now let's have a look at what over the top means. What, it, what, it, what essentially happens in over the top is that unlike in a three ball cascade where both hands move from out to in, in over the top, in over the top your hand moves from in to out. Let me show you how. This is a three ball cascade. Watch the hands as they move from out to in. Now watch my right hand. My hand is moving from in to out. That's essentially what over the top is all about. Yeah. So all you need to do is to get the three ball cascade in place, get it solid, and then break the habit. You know that that's a difficult part in juggling. Once you've gotten used to a pattern, it's really painful to move to a new pattern and to tell your hands to do something else. So try and attempt to move the right hand from in to out, and you will get over the top. And believe me, it's not as hard as it might seem initially. Within a few attempts, you should be able to get over the top, especially with your right hand. Yeah. So that is over the top with your right hand. Let's see a few variations. Now, you could do over the top with your left hand. Now, another thing you could do is to do over the top on a single ball. For example, notice the green ball. You could do, whenever the green ball reaches a particular hand, you could do an over the top throw. Let's have a look. Notice that whenever the green ball reaches a hand, I'm doing over the top throw. Yeah, that's a combination of the two. So these are the things you would pick up as you move along. So start with over the top in one hand and over the top in the other hand. Then once you get used to the two, start with over the top on a particular ball. Now the next step is to do over the top for every ball. That's something like this. Well, that's a bit difficult. You need to get the other three over the top patterns in place before you can move to over the top on all the three throws. Uh, one thing here is that juggling is a bit like cycling. You know, although I might be able to explain the tricks to some extent, some extent, uh, the real explanation or the real learning comes when you try juggling the balls and when you drop them. It's a bit like cycling, for example. Uh, if you ask a cyclist, how do you maintain your balance? The guy would find it very difficult to explain. Juggling is something similar to that. Once the trick clicks in your hand, then you would get it. But till then, you know, it's going to be rattling your veins. It's, it's one of those things. 
Let's now look at another hand. Again, just like over the top, it's got three different combinations. Right, left, and same ball. And just like over the top again, it requires you to have been a master of three ball cascade. Let's look at what under the hand might look like. Under the hand is again a very small variation in the three ball cascade. And one of the hands, instead of throwing or making a normal throw, goes under the other hand and makes a throw. Let's have a look. Watch the green ball. Yeah, when my green ball comes to my right hand, what I do is instead of throwing normally, I make a sweep, a full sweep of the right hand under the left hand and make a throw from here. And the rest of the pattern is just the same. Let's have a look again. Yeah, first again, try and break the habit of doing a normal cascade, make your right hand move and make an under, under the hand throw. The rest of the pattern should remain the same. Once you've mastered that, let's move to the next level. You can do under the hand with the other hand. Watch the green ball again. Yeah? Whenever the green ball comes, my left hand does an under the hand. So these are the two first steps in under the hand. Under the hand with your right hand, under the hand with your left hand. Now, try and do under the hand whenever a certain ball reaches your hand. Let's take the green ball again. So whenever, whenever the green ball reaches my right, I do one under the hand. And similarly, whenever it reaches my left, I do one under the hand. Again, it's a very small variation in the three ball cascade, but it's an awesome trick and gives an awesome effect. Yeah, that's under the hand explained for you. Another thing about juggling is that uh, quite often you might get stuck on a trick. You know, you try the trick, you try really hard, but you keep dropping balls and you're not getting anywhere. What I would suggest is take a break, forget about the trick, sleep over it, Get up the next day and whenever you have the free time, come back to the trick again and the chances are you would make it faster. Again, uh, books say that when you sleep, you're subconsciously working on the trick, working on the mistakes you made. And the next day when you come back to the trick, you're a much improved person and you can get the trick like this. So that's under the hand explained for you. Let's move on to the next trick now. The next trick is again a very important trick. It's called two in, the one, two in one hand, two in one in short. Now it's got three broad uh, subheadings, columns, circular, one up, two up. Two in one hand is important because it lends itself to a family of new tricks. And just like three ball cascade is a building block for several other tricks, two in one hand, again, I must say, is a building block for several tricks which are based on that. Let's have a look at what two in one hand looks like. Now the basic pattern could be of two types. You know, one is circular, one is columns. Let's have a look at what circular looks like. This is circular. Yeah, your hands are moving like this in a circle and the balls are you know, following some kind of an orbit. Well, the columns look something like this. The balls are going in two vertical columns. Now, these are the two broad things you need to practice. Typically, it's easier to get the columns first. So what I would suggest is go for the columns, try and get this solid. Yeah, initially what would happen, just like the three ball cascade, what would happen is that in a hurry to catch the next ball, your throw would go out of range. So work on it, that's a normal pattern, that's a normal practice, that, that's a normal learning curve that everyone has to go through. So drop the balls, throw the balls all over the place, and then you get it solid. Yeah, get the columns. You also need to work on your left hand. It's important to work on both the hands because a lot of the tricks later in the intermediate and advanced stage uh, require you to have the tricks mastered with both the hands. So coming back, two in one hand, circular, two in one hand columns. Let's now look at a slight variation to two in one hand. Let's build on it now. Let's get the third ball into the picture. I do two in one hand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this ball in line with the outer ball. So what you're going to see is my right hand is going to juggle two in one and the left hand is just going to toss the ball. Yeah. But it might seem that I'm, ha I'm juggling three balls with two hands, but actually it's only my right hand which is juggling. Have a look. Just got one up, two up. So what I'm doing here is that I'm juggling two in one hand and I'm having this ball follow this pattern here. That's the basic lesson that you need to know in two in one hand. And once you've mastered these tricks, we are ready to go to the next level. That's the intermediate.